Hey, aloha and good morning, or good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Uh, welcome to the May 1st, 2022 office hour. And thank you guys for tuning in. Get learn some Korean natural farming, share it around the world, and helping to make the environment and everything a better place for all of us. So um want to start off today got a got a fair amount of questions in the email and already some in the chat so stoked to see you guys here and help you guys out with your growing but as per usual want to start off with a little bit of some higher guidance from the Yi Ching so today is the corners of the mouth or providing nourishment it says, give proper nourishment to yourself and others. The image of this hexagram is that of an open mouth, and it comes to remind us that the nourishment of our body and spirits is important and merits our conscientious attention. The I Ching teaches us that if we wish to gauge someone's character, we should notice what he nourishes in himself and in others. Those who cultivate inferior behaviors and relationships are inferior people. Those who cultivate superior qualities in themselves and others are superior people. This is a test that we should apply to ourselves as well as to others. What you put in your body is obviously important because it determines your fundamental physical well-being. It is wise to be moderate and thoughtful about the food you eat. What you put in your mind is even more significant, and regulating it is a more subtle art. This hexagram gives us a three-part advice on that subject. The first counsel is that we should not feed our minds on desire. When we forgo our equanimity and begin to desire something or someone, a host of other inferior influences come into play. We become ambitious about obtaining the object of our desire. We become fearful that we will not. If we do achieve it, our ego is gratified and strengthened, and soon it issues another demand for us to meet. A self-reinforcing cycle of negativity is thus created and therefore it is wise to hold yourself free from desire. The second counsel is we begin a regular practice of meditation, sitting quietly with our eyes closed, for even as little as 15 minutes a day begins to clear the waste out of our hearts and minds, making room for the nourishment of peace and wisdom to enter in. To sit in meditation is to tune your ears to the voice of the sage. It is the most powerful way of gaining his assistance. The final counsel is that we observe tranquility in speech, thoughts, and actions. By cultivating a calm and equanimity in all that you say, think, and do, you nourish your superior self and those around you. One who follows these three counsels now will meet with good fortune. Oh, and that's that's good because um could use some good fortune right now and definitely being here um nourishing the KNF community, nourishing the people who have uplifting spirits, those who take time to lift each other up, say good things about each other. All those things really uh, resonates, you know, and uh, sitting a little bit more in meditation to clear the waste out. That's definitely something I could improve on. I always, I always feel like I'm so busy doing things, chasing, chasing my tail, not feeling like I'm doing enough. And, um, but to just sit still and realize that, you know, God everything, the whole higher powers, the higher spirits, the um, 
eternity that we're in. Why, why rush if you're already eternal, right? Um, it's no need for that. And so i um, feeling that here and um, just wanted, wanted to start off. I got, um, got a few questions here. So um, in the chat and uh, then I'll get to the emails and pull some of those up and get that together. And uh, hey, just want to thank you for tuning in. What's up, Thomas? Glad you made it this, this week. And how's it post up? All you guys, the goof man, man, you're, you're one of my favorites. You're so good at um, at working on KNF support and definitely got the highest score there of everybody. And um, our foundation's been thinking about sending you uh, some a reward for being so so great there so um we'll have a board meeting soon and maybe get get something coming your way um so let's see abduli is asking what are the signs the knf solutions have gone bad especially the um knf foods and the police and so um yeah we can all improve that's for sure <laughs> that's why we're here right otherwise we'd be there um, so what are, what are the signs that they are bad? Um, number one is the smell and the, the good solutions should, um, some, sometimes, sometimes when you open them, gas forms up top. And so when you first open it, it'll, it'll have a certain smell like alcohol or whatever, but let that smell kind of come out, um, that the gas that's built up. But then smelling your solution after the gas is off gas, because sometimes even the, the 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 protectors, the police, the lactobacillus, it can smell like um, acetone, like like um, nail polish remover, and it's just the gases that have built up above. So let those gases out. Um, but smelling them, and they should smell pretty normal. Um, yeah, <laughs> and um, but th then they've gone bad if you taste them and um the the fr the the foods like the fruit juice or the plant juice if they taste like vinegar they've gone bad or if they taste like extreme alcohol they've also gone bad um and the police uh it should have kind of a sweet sweet taste to it when you when you super saturate it with sugar if you're just tasting it right out of the um, without super saturating it, it should taste a little bit um, like um, like that sourness of like sourdough bread, that kind of like yogurt juice, that little sourness to it. And when it's gone bad, the the smell is is no longer there. Um, so so those are those are the ways. Um, also, another visual way to evaluate them is if they're bubbling a whole bunch. Um, odds are that the microbes are no longer arrested in there. The sugar helps to tie up the water and put them under arrest so they can't move. And if they're bubbling, that means there's a lot of microbial activity and the, and they're continuing to decay. Um, so, yeah. So that's, that's how you tell if they're good or not. Um, and then the fifth bardo is asking, I have a layer of brown sugar sitting on the top of my LAB. Should I remove this or leave it? Um, I find it hard to believe that you have brown sugar sitting on the top because um, the sugar is usually so heavy it'll sink to the bottom and then you need to stir it in really well. Um, so I find it weird that there would be brown sugar sitting on top of the lactobacillus after you've removed the curds and whey you know curds and you're just super saturating the whey so uh, maybe you can get me some further clarification here but that seems very strange to me you have sugar sitting on top usually a sugar accumulates at the bottom and will make a ring at the bottom so maybe i'm missing something but i don't know usually it's more dense and heavy than water um yeah, and um, yeah, the goof man helping you out there in the chat. You're you're so amazing, man. Yeah, I appreciate you just helping. Um, yeah, and it's springtime. Thanks, Stone Mason. What's up from Indiana? And also, 
want to thank you for um for helping out with uh, the monetary donations man every I, I again you're you're on it and it really um it's really such a, a nice thing to feel this you know supporting each other coming back uh that way i really really do appreciate it so just want to let you know man it, it's uh goes a long way um yeah we all can improve um and then also i just <clears throat> since i'm here um i i want to let you know this past week um i did another class with the hfuu farm apprentice mentorship program and i did a like kind of a lecture style zoom class with them if you've seen it um if you if you've tuned in um last or two let's see here let's see here hang on i'm pulling pulling a few things up here um let me actually um go to my channel here and um let's see share the screen Yeah, so if on my on my YouTube channel here, um, if you see this this video here, this Pure KNF Solutions Microbial Theory, um, this was a lecture that I did about a year ago, and thirteen thousand views on it. Um, you know, which is great for a almost three hour video of people tuning in checking that out. But I just taught this class again and kind of had a secondary approach to this. Um, you know, so if you want to hear the same thing in different words a year later and seeing what I got, um, just did this again. So I'll be launching that soon. Um, and also if you're, um, you know, that LAB question here was really this super saturation video. If you haven't watched this on how to do it, um, it's really, it's really a good thing to, to check in. And, um, so if you know this this if you want to get to my youtube channel it's knfvideo.com but if you're watching this on youtube you're already there so just click on the you know drake um, pure knf dr drake video or name and then you know subscribe and check out my channel and there's there's just tons tons of things you know these office hours are there um there's also you know these solution videos which i'm just about to launch some updates for them uh, and then of course this this video here the, the certification course I really go you know in depth it's like 12 hour course on all that and um, you can also watch Master Cho directly and Young Song Cho directly and Elaine Ingham and get all this knowledge and um, and then these farm tours to see Master Cho in the field and all these things um, and then no smell pigs all these ideas so you know i just get kind of um you know i just been putting all this information out for years and um you know love nourishing you guys with all this and um there's even research uh things here and you know so anyway check check this out um you probably already did so i'll transition out of that but just letting you know i did that class again and also you know trying to build up the channel to keep keep things going um yeah it's awesome you found some morel mus mushrooms stonemason glad on that and then i have one other uh thing i wanted to pull up here and that is um also if you guys are interested right now um you know i always kind of promote the book and such um, but if you go to, um, naturalfarminghawaii.net, let's see here, pull this back up. If so, if you go naturalfarminghawaii.net or KNF support, either one of these, um, knfsupport.com, either of those websites links to it. But if you click on the recipe book right now, um, there are recipe books printed in black and white in stock. And I have been mailing these out. I've sent out three in the past week that I just put these up. So if you're looking to get a hard copy mailed to you, and sorry, this is not, I don't do international shipping. It's only in the United States. But if you are, because USPS, uh, the Postal Service, I just use a um, flat rate package to send it to you. 
But if you're looking for a hard copy mailed to you, um, I do have, uh, I think, six more copies here that I'm sending out. So, um, so you can jump on that. And they are in stock, which is kind of rare. I, I don't really send these out that often, but um, maybe I'll be doing more of that in the future coming up. But just want to let you know there are some books in stock. And um, I also wanted to give a shout out to... Wilman Santos um, for for helping out, giving a monetary donation through um, Natural Farming Hawaii. It's it's amazing, you know. I I I really appreciate that. When you guys give me that kind of um, donation, it helps me do more things like print books and those types of things and and all of this. So um, so I really appreciate it. Um, so. Um, yeah, and and um, Neo Phil, Neo Flyer Mike is saying just got the Jadam book. Recommend that book highly. Um, it's an excellent book to help you get into it. Um, okay, and then uh, let's see here. Post up, post up media is asking. Um, a friend has saplings from his farm. We removed, dried two days ago, and put in a. Um, seed solution for 12 hours planting with a mound how long until we see growth they look dead what's the best practice with this um man saplings that they tried two days and put in seed soak solution they look dead um man so if you're just transplanting things that are not in soil, you don't want to remove, like you want to keep them like 12 hours. I think that might've been a, um, a mistake. You're not supposed to bare root them for 12 hours. You're supposed to just stop watering them for 12 hours. So if you pulled saplings out, like you're talking about little transplants, um, you you know if they were potted you're just supposed to stop watering them for two days um and rotate them 90 degrees you're like they're only supposed to be bare rooted for for um a little little bit of time as you're taking them out of this shaking off the soil putting them into the, the seed soak solution um and soaking those so I think that might have been a little bit of a mistranslation there. Hopefully they'll come back and, and live there, but they're not supposed to be bare-rooted for two days. Um, just, just so you know, I'm, I'm sorry about that. If there's any mistranslation, I hope it wasn't. I hope there's more saplings, and I hope those, those do come back. But definitely put some lactobacillus in there to try and get them to revive and, and come back. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so if hopefully that, that transplant, I, I really should make a nice video on how to do that. Um, in fact, I think we do have one, but got to edit it. Um, <laughs> and Thomas is saying he killed a snake and buried it underneath, just like we do with the fish and the pile tech. That's awesome. Okay, so... Um, Okay, so sweet, th sweeter than an anything is saying with the can of foods, I think I understand to avoid overly toxic plants without necessarily having to be 100% edible. How does that apply to solanums? Can I feed peppers and ground cherries back to themselves? Um, absolutely. Um, any plant any plant that you ferment, you can feed back to itself, no problem, without any danger um, of of doing it. Especially when you're diluting one to five hundred, um, you're there's not really a, a problem with that. So it should be good, sweeter than anything. Um, and Stone Mason started all his seeds this week indoors. Seed soak solution worked amazing, and everything came up in three days. All the seeds sprouted. Awesome. Um, hate thinning them back. Always love a big bowl of sprouts, though. 
And also those, um, those little sprouts, if you pull a whole bunch, those are great candidates again to ferment and get a seed, um, you know, like a sprout solution from them. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, we're just reading through the chat a little bit about these things. It looks like, yeah, free, free education. Um, you know, fr freedom, just like freedom, it's, it's not truly free, but, um, but I'm happy you're here taking advantage of me being here and everyone's community support that helps me. Um, you know, the books are good and yeah. Um, okay. Let's see here. Okay, so so you're saying the the process. So 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 the process is that like if you're digging up a sapling, as soon as you're digging it up, um, just just take those if they're three to five feet tall, soak them into there, um, soak them into the seed soak solution. Also, uh, increase the amount of um, your structure, which you know I I, I really want to get away from the old vocabulary, but people call it WCP WCAP. It's like what the hell is that? Who knows? But put a little bit more structure in there because it's a bigger, a, a tree that's three to five feet tall needs more structure to hold itself up because it's, it's, it's growing. So when you're making your seed soak solution, add the structure in at one to 500 or a little, yeah, stronger so that you, you're getting that structure into those older trees that you're transplanting. Okay. Um, and so T Timothy's asking, after super saturating the, the can of food, does it need to be stored with a breathable lid? Um, it can. I usually seal mine because I, otherwise I get evaporation happening. And, um, and then anything with um, the medicine in there, the alcohol tinctures that people mistakenly call OHN, um, that should definitely be sealed. Anytime you're having the <clears throat> anything with the vodka mixed in there, it should be airtight sealed. Otherwise, your vodka will evaporate out. So if you're storing concentrated maintenance where you've mixed in your food, cleanser, structure, medicine together, and you have those in a concentrate, which I often do, I'll mix mix up a gallon of it, uh, which lasts me about a month, and I'll store it, but I store it with a sealed lid because I don't want it to evaporate. Um, and so how would, uh, so John is asking, how would one store IMO three or four and approximately how long could it last? I just like to plan for it. Um, I store it in a wooden box up at my, um, my barn. Um, you can also store it in burlap sacks. Um, the key is to get it so that it's not resting right on the ground or, um, another another way people store it is in milk crates and take take newspaper put newspaper in a milk crate then fill that milk crate up with um imo and then stack it so that it has air to breathe through and don't store it very thick um you know storing it pretty thin resting there imo3 <clears throat> does not store that long um it, it, you end up getting moths and all kinds of things in there but IMO4, once you mixed your soil into it, it stores a really, really long time, um, like a year, two years, um, no problem. Sometimes, it, it just make sure it doesn't get too wet while you're while you're storing it, and uh, should be should be fine on that. Um, so I, I maybe I should take a picture of of how I store my IMO and post it to my YouTube. Um, like they they let you put like these story things out or just communicate with you guys. So if you'd hit smash that subscribe button, I'll go do that today. When I go up to feed my animals, I'll take a picture of my IMO storage area. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, good. You didn't kill the, kill your trees post up. I'm glad there's plenty more. And, um, yeah, so, so hopefully that's clear with you guys. Um, okay. So, 
sup fish how you um okay so i'm gonna jump back to some of these questions that i got here in my email um because and if you do want to send me an email with questions um the email is drake d-r-a-k-e at pure knf dot org um and let's see here so i want to um i'm going to answer some of george's questions here and let me get this here going so that i can switch my deal uh, this one okay boom wow look at that um so i'm gonna make these a little bit bigger here okay so hopefully you guys can read that i can read it um and so um george is asking here um it's his first attempt at making the the disgustingly cheap microbes so i always if you ever see me read over an acronym and i'll just say the words that i say because Oh, man, I'm trying to discourage the the acronyms. It's it's really like Korean natural farming came from Korea and was translated by someone who didn't speak English, and they got all these acronyms. And the acronyms are fine and okay, but they really hamper people from new people from learning. It seems like everyone's speaking a foreign language, and so if I just say disgustingly cheap microbes, it's really clear that I'm making like disgustingly cheap microbes, and there's no foreignness to that so if you say like i'm making jms people are like what's that but if you say man i'm making disgustingly cheap microbes there's it's just so i encourage everybody to speak the speak the english version of this and leave the the acronyms and the foreign translations behind because we need to move knf forward not backward um so so anytime you see me skip over these things and i'll just say so he's making disgustingly cheap microbes at um 50 Fahrenheit, which is pretty darn cold, um, 10, 10 centigrade. Um, and so he put in a 130 watt heater turned on all the time, but he didn't get a chance to look and check on day three. Could he have mixed the, uh, missed the point of highest density with the microbes in it? Judging from the foam, um, there was smell, but it was constant. So I could not tell if it went over the peak of microbial activity. When I'm looking at it and I'm seeing these bubbles develop like this and I'm seeing these ring type things, it's not a big ring because you're doing it in a square container. Um, but I would say right now, you you know, I would use it at this point, if not a little bit before when you're starting to see these things growing here and these things happening, that's when I'd use it. Um, and so, so I would say like, if I, if I opened the container and I saw this happening, I would use it. Um, it looks like with this volume of container, you might want to add a few more potatoes or a little bit more starch to it. And the microbes would kick off even more. Um, but it, but it's looking good. And there's, if you're seeing this growing on top, you know, the microbes are growing underneath and this is chock full and full of microbes. So I would use it at this point. Um, and get it get it before it collapses so right now i would i would use it um and the second part of that question is could a dirty container affect the process um and yeah it can because you're you're trying to get enough of your soil microbes in there and if you're competing with other like kind of pathogen biofilms other things in your container they'll start to grow as soon as that starch and sh um you know, salt and heat and water gets in there, they'll start to grow. So if you can um, fill the container with water, put in some KNF protectors, which are the lactic acid bacterias, put those in there for um, uh, about three or four days, five, you know, five days, and they'll eat away all the gross um, other stuff that's in there. So dilute it um you know about one to a thousand put the put the lactobacillus in there and you could even put in a little bit of molasses in there to just help activate those lactobacillus and they'll clean out your container so so that's good there um yeah so anyway yeah so the dirty container could affect it um number two here um 
He's asking, what is the best way to bring the, the rice to the location of choice for collecting the IMO? In a separate closed container and load the box with the warm material. So um, I would I would wait for your rice to cool in your rice cooker, then load it into your collection container, and then take it out to where you're going. Um, you know, and, and seal seal the container up at your place. So that you're trying not you're trying to minimize the amount of air contact and contamination that's going to happen that are not soil microbes that are going to start to grow. So I when you know when I open my rice cooker or open the pot that I'm cooking it in, it's always hot and it's really pretty clean at that point. And then I wait for it to cool, then I transfer it into my box, then take it out to the location. Um, that that seems to be the best way to to do it. Um, but wait for it to be completely cooled. Um, okay. And number three, he's checking his first IMO trap, um, which was, he's, you know, you can check out last week's episode. He made this really cool box with the IMO, except for he put the paper right over the top. And I was like, oh, you should have made more airspace and enough rice so that you fill it up two thirds and then put the cover over. And it it may have to do slightly with the the really cold weather that you're in. Um, so what I would do is just set this box and leave it out there without checking it for, um, for at least, um, two weeks or like 14 days. So just put it out there for 14 days and, um, don't open it. If you open it early to like look inside to see if the microbes are growing, you're letting out all their atmosphere and all their gases. And it's kind of like knocking on the door when some when a couple is enjoying each other. Um, it kind of ruins the mood a little bit. Um, so you don't want to disturb them when they're reproducing. So just in your temperatures, set it out there for two weeks, 14 days, and then check on it. And really when you're doing it, really make sure it's buried down well. Put the leaves over and really insulate it well so that they're they're not out in that cold weather they're they're like in a sleeping bag kind of idea and so it should really take that long so um just you know there's no way around it because your temperatures are, are are pretty cold so you have to do that um and then <clears throat> his last question here number four At which IMO stage, if at all, can additional additives like the burnt bones, and eggshell leftovers from making the solutions or crushed rocks be added? Um, well, we, we've added lava rocks, which are really mineral-rich basaltic rocks, into the IMO4 as it's cooking, and you can do that. Um, but majority of these, you want the IMOs to finish propagating out with your, like, so number your number three, which I call propagated IMO, don't add that stuff in. It should just be propagating with really high quality, um, the like the mill run type foods. Um, and then your IMO four, you would let um, just mix with your soil and other nutrients again. Follow that recipe. Do that. Um, it's it's typically what they'd call fermented mixed compost. And Master Cho calls it IMO5, but he also calls like four things IMO5. So it's a real confusing vocabulary. But in your ferment and mix compost, after you have your IMOs, then adding eggshells, those burnt things in, other, um, your greens and browns to make a mixed comp, like a compost with a proper carbon nitrogen balance. Um, and if you don't know what composting is, again, check the YouTube watching Lane Ingham's lessons, she has, she'll tell you all about composting, but compost that way, that's when you should be adding those things in because, um, you don't want to affect the, um, the microbial propagation. You really want to have it so that at a certain point, the microbes are going to break those things down and bring those nutrients in. And that would be like a fermented mixed compost or an IMO5. So hope. Hope all that's helpful for George there and really, really been enjoying helping him out and working with him as um, mentorship. Um, you know, 
it's it's cool to to see his process happening. And again, I just I want to transition back and just share some of these pictures. Like, look at these sweet beds that he's made. And he's doing no dig. He's building up. This is like the manure from his goat farm. He puts this frame and then fills these beds up. And as he's going to soak these with the microbes and get those in there, it's just going to take off all this. Like it, this, this to me, when I look around and I see this, this is so inspiring. And taking some of that hay over here, that straw, covering, you know, putting these things, making the microbes grow. Like, I just, I just think, and and looks like there's wood chips underneath. I mean, I, I just think you're, you're setting yourself up for success, man. It's, it's going to be amazing. So I really, you know, you, you've been inspiring me here, which is, is kind of funny, you know, like, um, but just when I see, when I see these things happening, I'm just like, wow, these are happening. So, um, yeah, so I'm glad you guys in the chat post up and I witness kind of figuring it out, talking with each other. Um, okay. There's a question here. Um, Rooted Excellence is asking, what should we expect to see through the microscope looking deeper at the KNF ferments? How do I understand um, the vitality of the ferments? Well, so one thing one thing you're going to notice is that um, if you look at a super saturated solution, you're not going to see too much um, microbial activity. Odds are you'll see some yeasts and um, and other bacterias in there, um, and maybe some lactobacillus. But the way to see the activity is to take um, to take two samples, like one one get a little bit of soil, and then take one and put it with some of the fermented plant juice, like the, the can of food diluted and one without just water and then compare, leave those for about 12 hours and then compare the water that you get off those with the microbial activity you see from the one that you put the food with and the one without. And that's going to give you the most telltale because the one with the food is going to take off. There's going to be all kinds of biological activity. But the whole point is when you're storing them, you don't want them to be active. Only once you activate them with microbes, with soil, that's when you should see a whole bunch of stuff. So um, so just to let you know, when you're looking at it, you're not going to see that much of, um, of the activity. The whole point is to not have that activity. Um, but the fermentation happens. You'll see it. It's, it's kind of more of like a little bit of a faith thing, but... Not too much, um, you know. You you can see this when you when you go to dilute it and activate it again. Um, and I'm glad your um, can of fuel, your fish aminos are taken off, Thomas. It's excellent, man. Um, down in Florida, I just talking to someone else in Florida, and if you make a whole bunch of that, I can I'll I'll, I'll let people know, and they can get in touch and get these solutions from you. Um, so. Um, okay, so, yeah, yeah, um, okay, yeah, you guys talking a little bit about the vocabulary there, all this, trying to scroll, make sure I'm staying up on these things. Okay, um, so, um, so Shaman King, just to, just to answer you there, yeah, I'm going to actually get back to the emails. I'm going to kind of use them in reverse here because I, I got so many emails this past week. Um, let's see here. Um, so, so Shaman, to answer your question on um, can you use Brewer's Spent, um, so I think you're talking about uh, like um, – the, the grains that have been used for brewing. Um, typically, a lot of their carbohydrates have been used out of them. So it's a good material to use, but um, you want to make sure you replenish enough of the carbohydrates. Often the yeasts in brewing have broken down all those carbohydrates and made the fermentation happen already. So if you're trying to get another fermentation to happen in something that someone's already eaten, it's like it needs to be replenished. And so what I often recommend is taking like, um, powdered potatoes, something like that that you can buy, like at a, 
um, a bulk food store and take uh, powdered potatoes or something and blending that back in or blending some other carbohydrate type of material back into the spent to make that work. If you don't, it's like, it's like someone's already eaten it, you know? And so it's really hard to, um, to get that same vigorous microbial propagation that you want to have happen in your IMOs. So making sure to, to supplement and blend something back in. Um, and so, yeah. Um, so, um, does it, so John, John is asking here, does it have to be a cedar box for the rice? Um, what are some alternatives? Um, no, it does not have to be a cedar box to collect your IMOs. Um, I often recommend that people go get like a, um, an old Easter basket, uh, at thrift stores, you know, those kind of woven wicker baskets, those types of things. Uh, then just soak it in vinegar or put it in your microwave on high for like five minutes and clean everything out of there, kill everything that was there. Um, you know, I just soak it in straight vinegar, uh, for, for a, a couple, you know, clean it out so that there's no mold or anything and then leave it in direct sunlight just to clean out any bad spores or anything. And then you should have a nice clean basket. And those are nice because some of them you'll find to have like a lid on them, like these woven basket type of things that you can find. And those are really good alternatives. Mm. In fact, when I'm doing my microbes, um, I'm almost always doing it in like a woven um, basket made from like pandanus, like a lauhala tree. Um, so, so yeah, no, no need for a cedar box. Um, Okay, let's see. Oh man, you guys, am I? Okay, coming down. Lost my. It always it always scrolls me here. Yeah, secondhand store. Yeah, you guys are already on it in the chat, man. Um. Yeah. Um. Sh Shaman King, if you're having trouble collecting the microbes using the rice in the in your yard, you can create an alternative. Um environment to do it um and i really should show you um it's in one of my videos um when we're when we're in korea um and master lee is doing it in in a box outside so um let's see a note to myself I'll, I'll put that out as like a youtube clip here um i'll just say um master lee imo inside so look look for that coming up this week I'll, I'll put out that just clip that little bit of the video of how to do imos um if you can't go out to the field um yeah and sweet sweeter sweeter than anything it is it's true it's our it's our community coming together that enables you to learn for questions you didn't maybe even think of asking yet um but you know when we all share like this it's it's what what happens and it's that's why i do this you know and the goof man is on it and thomas eyewitnesses in here there's a lot of really experienced folks that are that are in the chat and joining in and all those things so yeah um and so post up media is asking for imo what is the red dirt we have lots of clay in the jungle what are we looking for that can be a source <clears throat> or near our property um I can't donate here on YouTube from Panama. <laughs> we'll send one direct to your site. Yeah. Wow. That's weird. They block Panama. That's weird embargoes and who knows. Um, so uh, the clay is what you're looking for. Basically, um, when when it's saying the red dirt in the IMO4, so let me let me pull that up here a little bit for you guys. But basically what, what it's talking about is um, it's talking about like nutrient-less dirt. So when I was in Korea, instead of red dirt, sometimes they're also using this really poor granite soil, which is really like mineral rich, but it's not fertile. Like there's no humic acids and stuff in it. It's it's mostly like this really, um, you know, the whole point is like red dirt is full of minerals, clay is full of minerals, but it's not great for growing until you kind of activate it and get life and get humus in there. 
and that's that's what you want to be doing so when it says red dirt go go for the clay you'll you'll be great on that um i'm just going to pull this up here um let's see oh man i should have these things pre-queued already for sure but um let's see here oh there it is boom just when you thought you couldn't find it there it is okay so i'll pull this up transition back so so what you're talking about here is in the imo4 recipe here when i'm making soil activated imo4 it's talking about adding red dirt as well as soil from your field so it's 50 pounds of dirt being added one is the really nutrientless red dirt here um, and the other is this um, soil from the field so this is the red dirt is really poor soil and then this other soil is like pretty decent soil it's from your field and so the this red soil is going to add all these minerals oh what's up shaman king that's awesome man wow thank you thank you thank you um appreciate it um so the red dirt is the one with you know minerals not much life or anything in there you're really trying to get like that you know teach the teach your microbes how to work with poor junk soil and then the soil from the field the reason you're adding that is because that's where you're bringing in other things like nematodes and these other types of microbes that are that are living in your actual soil field and and so when you mix these two together plus these propagated imo plus all this maintenance solution the lactobacillus and the sea salt and the five gallons of water into there that just kicks them off and they have everything they need to create this huge colony and that's what makes the imos especially the imo4 and this whole process so powerful so you're teaching the microbes how to transform poor soil you're bringing in some of your good soil so you're you're blending these families because imos will have turf wars if they don't recognize microbes like they're foreign microbes coming into the environment they'll fight but if you're bringing in your field soil plus these propagated microbes that are indigenous from your area plus this poor soil they're all going to work together in symbiosis and they're really going to work to build and turn that material into great amazing stuff so just want to let you know that's that's the whole reason for it but if you don't have access to red dirt like a granite like uh, rocky soil something that's small and and poor to bring in those minerals that's what you're looking for so um and does apple uh george is asking does apple vinegar have any disadvantage over any other no apple vinegar is great anything from a fruit or a grain type of vinegar you're going to be great um yep and then you guys are talking about the clay you guys already beat me to it it's because i'm way scrolled up here um and yeah li live vinegars are better the more you can get a live vinegar you're, you're bringing in other life forms and live vinegars have all kinds of enzymes typically more concentrated vinegars have been heated up when you heat them up um those those things happen to go away so um yeah and you guys are all talking about this this good stuff happening um Um, yeah, um, so the, and I do recommend just using white vinegar, like diluted down to 5% acidity for making reproduction and structure. Um, oftentimes it's, it's more expensive for me to get an apple cider vinegar to make those or an organic vinegar. And I don't actually really want the extra life in there. Sometimes films will grow and things like that. Um. Okay, so um, Ma Cola is asking, um, I'm living on a cane island. That's awesome, sugar cane. You're, you know, it's one of the best, most uh, enriching crops around the world if you can get your economics to work right. Um, so you have access to brown sugar and molasses. Do I recommend using them mixed together? Um, no, uh, if you already have brown sugar, just use that. And the only time I recommend using molasses is when you're gonna take like lactobacillus, put it into water and activate it. 
Um, otherwise, molasses is not used in Korean natural farming. And don't use it as a preservation thing because it has too much moisture content and it will activate your microbes versus arrest them. So you want to, when you want to store something, you want it to be arrested and stopped, not activated. And molasses will activate things. So, um, yeah, so, yep. And you guys all got great comments here. Um, yeah, um, and yeah, sweeter than anything is saw a video from um, the Urban Natural Farming with Dr. Um, Dr. Wayne Bird. And he went to a botanical garden to grab it. Yep, because that's all he had in Los Angeles when he was living there. Um, but now he lives up in Kohala. He lives just behind me someplace. Um, and Wayne is epic. Check his channel out. Uh, give him a like. He's an amazing guy. Uh, he's a great friend of mine. I really, I really love Wayne. Uh, shout out to Wayne Bird and Sarah and you guys. Um, really like you. Uh, so, um, yep, yep. And, um, you guys got good comments in here about cooking the vinegar to make it for the bones. Um, okay, yeah, and so if you're 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 in, um, so I got there's this comment here talking about um, where Makola is saying Cho talked about um, having the fermented plant juice. Um, it works perfect with molasses. What you're what you're ending up with is a completely different product than a fermented plant juice that Cho's talking about. If you're using molasses, you are getting more of a um, a fermented plant extract than a fermented plant juice, and they're they're different. Um, and it and it works in practice. The only thing is you can't store it very long. In the Philippines, they also said, "Oh, we we use molasses because you don't understand. You're just a white person that's rich, and you have sugar and all this." But I went to go taste every one of their solutions. They all tasted like vinegar. So joke was on them because that's all they were using was vinegar. They thought they were using all these products, but they were really only using vinegar. So um, there is a big difference. And I can tell you, you know, um, that following the recipe and not substituting in molasses makes a huge difference. You will see plant growth with molasses, just like if I just took just molasses and put it out there without it, any of the other stuff. I would see plant growth because molasses itself is a food. It has minerals in it, has sugars in it. It's going to stimulate plant growth, but it's not the same as a fermented plant juice, and you're not getting those same things out of it. So um, that's the only thing I can tell you. If people are trying to, like, tell me I'm wrong on that, I can just tell you um, that's, you know, mm, your mileage will vary. And go try and, in two months, taste your plant juice, and I guarantee it'll taste like vinegar. And so, um, so that's just, just what it is. And you, you end up using vinegar, which vinegar by itself is actually a plant stimulant. We use vinegar in Korean natural farming. So there's a bunch of good things and all that. So, um, yeah. Okay. So, uh, let's see here. Um, looks like a lot of the emails I'm gonna, I'll just email you guys back and get to it. Cause I don't think we'll see what's happening with the time here, but you guys are so good with the live questions. You just keep them rolling for me. So, um, if you made and used a, a plant food from bracken or other, um, herbal insecticide herb, would you have an insecticidal property or is the dilution not enough? Um, and so, John, um, there, there are actually two separate things. Like, one is where you're concentrating it down as an herbal solution. Um, so if you're not familiar with the JHS, which, again, it's an acronym, but it's just um, the herbal sides where you take an herb and you put it in water and then you boil it down until you reduce half the volume, you've left with a really thick, concentrated herbal solution. And that is used as an insecticide when you put it with... Um, uh, soap and um, there's a lot more to talk about that, but it's in the it's in the Jadam book if you're interested. Um, and if you just make a plant juice from it, they it will have some of those properties, but the herbal solution is going to be much more concentrated and much better at killing pests. Whereas if you make a food from it, it may just be a discouragement. Um, and really, the whole point is to get your plant so healthy that it has all the chemicals it needs in there. 
And if you look at it, healthy plants are not, they get an insect will come and take a small bite, but it's not going to devour your whole plant. And so that just comes from health at its basis there. Um, okay. Okay, so Thomas is saying, found out the plot he was on was a dairy farm for the past. It's wetlands, so the only thing he's worried about with his soils is how sandy it is. But I think biochar can take care of that. Yep, you're right. Um, also put down compost, wood chips, you know, just build your organic matter back, Thomas, on, on sandy soils. That's the key. Um, okay, uh, Dan, Dan, cool, would you... I've been following you for a long time as well, and I really wanted to get into KNF for this plot of land I rent at my community garden, but I haven't found a convenient way for me to do it as of yet. Well, Dan, man, the way to do it is start with this recipe right here and just make these disgustingly cheap microbes. Depends on your temperature, but it should only take a couple days to, to get this together and put these in and start with the microbes. and I'm, 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 I have confidence that, that if you do this, you'll see the results, you'll see the action, other people will see it, and um, they'll appreciate it, and uh, then you can share with them what you're doing and how it came together. So I think um, making making this, the reason I say to start with this, it only takes a couple hours, um, it's, you know, depending on your temperature. Where, where George is, it, you know, it's taking three, four days, but that's because it's 50 degrees. Um, you know, as, as springtime comes on and it gets warmer, it should be quicker. Um, okay, so, um, Jatkabi, I'm scraping up the soil and dirt that's under my IMO pile as I turn live. I've been turning it for 17 days. What? Is that too much calories? No, um, uh, if it's going for 17 days, it sounds like somehow it's still getting mo water or moisture in there. And so if you're, the key is once you start your IMO pile, like when you first put the liquid in, you get it to 65% moisture content. And after that, don't add any water. If it's going for 17 days, it seems like there's water somehow getting into your pile. And I would be careful on that because that's the only way. Otherwise, the microbes just via their nature will dehydrate themselves and go to sleep and should be done. So if it's going for 17 days, that sounds like water is somehow getting in there. Um, yeah, um, okay, let's see here, um, is there something, okay, so Ignacio is asking, is there something in KNF to barack up calcium and build it up, build up in loamy clay, um, organic matter in clay, but also um, calcium. Yeah, the, the, the KNF reproduction is your calcium. And so adding that in, it'll help to loam it up. Um, yeah, and, and the goof man saying, yeah, um, the IMOs also for, to, to loam up clay, loamy soil, you know, after you get the IMOs in there, IMOs love clay. If you take IMOs, put it on top of the clay, and water them with the se the soil prep solution and get that in there man they'll 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 eat right through that clay and and make it just loam up right away um as it, you know you'll just watch it turn brown as it as it goes so um um is there any way i can find inspiration so to develop my imos in a suburban setting in a lo very low scale yeah, I would, again, um, Dan, I would just say go with go with the very cheap microbes because to make it on such a small scale, um, it's really easy to do that, and you'll you'll find it's it's great. Um, okay. So uh, post up saying the IMO horse feed got wet. More coming. Had growths we removed. Um, if your if your IMO pile is blooming out, no worries. Just turn it in. Um, turn those things in. The microbes will eat it. Um, hit 124, then turn down. On day five, the pile's been hitting 115 to 124, turning one time. So post up. It sounds like you're doing your IMOs perfect and doing it great and getting it all there. Um, 
Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, Shaman King. Yeah. I'll, I'll make sure you get that receipt and make sure. Yeah. It's sometimes if you add a donation, then it adds it to the, um, the thing where it doesn't process all the way through. Okay. So yeah, nice to hear. Thanks. Thanks for everybody. Um, reaching the top of the hour here. So I'm going to I'm going to hit up these questions here and then I'll get back to the folks via email, via the email. And um, maybe I'll just do a small video without um, without it being live so I don't get more questions. Um, but um, what is the smallest amount of rice possible for a decent amount of IMO harvest? Um, just a small home gardener. Wooden caddies from the craft supplier. Reinforce it with mesh and twine. Yes, so... Um, the smallest amount I, you know, I do a, I do a four cup rice minimum. If you're doing smaller than that, it's hard. Um, sometimes I have collected in smaller boxes, like, uh, like this one here. Um, but it doesn't really give me that great of a collection. The reason I did this small of a box is this one had a camera installed into it and it, this little light would flash and I was trying to take a picture of the IMOs growing in a time lapse as it grew, but it didn't really turn out that well. Um, yeah, so. Um, yeah, it's, it's possible. But the thing is, the thing is to collect, collect more of it, collect more IMO one than you need. You can just store it and then make liquid teas from it. Um, just, just, you know, like follow, follow the, um, you know any other recipes and then just put a, a bit of IMO one in there and let it brew for a couple hours and you know you'll be getting a, a cheap way to do this um, and cleaning out old um, old chemical spraying equipment is um, yeah the lactobacillus will eat it out and do that so um, oh you have too much calcium and other minerals how do I get rid of that um, you have too much calcium uh, it, key is to add more organic matter to it and the IMOs will eat out those calciums and if your pH is too high just adding more organic matter pretty much you know organic matter solves everything in a certain sense but um, getting um, humic and fulvic acids you can buy those in concentrate and put those in so um, yeah and again yeah the IMOs will balance it out so um, so cool. Um, want to thank you guys uh, for tuning in. I'll, I'll get back to the emails the other way, um, and got uh, just you know want to thank um, Pure KNF Foundation for helping out with all this. Uh, and um, let's see. And then also again, um, you know KNF support. Um, you can add these here. Looks like there's a few questions here to get to. Um, but KNF support, get these answers here. You can get the book there as well. Download that, um, and find more answers that people have already answered. And if you like the answer, uh, vote it up and put it in and, uh, appreciate you. Yeah. Um, goes both ways. Hope again today you guys can, um, you know, find the corners of the mouth, nourish, put good things in your body. I'm definitely going to try and do that today. Been drinking um, sea salt with calcium and calcium phosphate in this warm water for my morning. I've kicked the habit of doing coffee and I do natural farming in the morning, um, but also putting good thoughts in our heads and sharing those with others. So appreciate you guys tuning in and um, as always, long live the natural farmer. Love you guys. Aloha.